All right, let's get right to it. Python is a very versatile, simple programming language and could be used for so many things. Data science, web development, game development, you name it. Python most definitely has a module or framework for it. But before we get to Python, you have to download a few things on your computer. Two things, Python itself and a code editor. I use VS Code, but there is a ton of other editors out there you could use. Anyways, downloading Python is very easy. Just go to python.org and download the latest version of Python for your computer. After that, this thing will pop up and just click on add to path and it should basically download Python onto your whole system. A cleaner way to do it, especially if you already have Python on your computer, is to create a separate folder in your main users folder and download Python there instead which allows you to separate the different versions of Python and also access them later in the future. Also, a good habit you should get into is creating virtual environments for your Python projects. These environments basically contain the individual modules and frameworks for a specific project, which will help organize everything for you and make it easier to share and collaborate with other people. So there's that. First, create a Python environment folder in your users, which will contain your first virtual environment. Then simply go to your command prompt and CD into your Python environment folder. Once you're there, type in the location of the Python version you want to use, and then the following line. And the last part is where you name your environment. You can activate your environment very simply by typing the environment name slash scripts slash activate. Here you can start installing all the modules you want. So go crazy. By using the pip install command, for example, pip install pandas, which is a very useful module for any data science practitioner. After that, you can deactivate your environment by literally typing deactivate in the prompt. I don't have a Mac because Windows is king, but the process should be quite similar. In your text editor, locate your Python interpreter from the virtual environment folder to start using the environment as you start coding. VS Code itself has tons of plugins for you to make your Python coding journey so much easier. So I definitely recommend downloading some of that. After you have all of that set up, you are ready to code. Basics of Python. Now I'm gonna go through the building blocks of Python. Once you boil Python down to its fundamental levels, you can build it up and advance it to make more complicated programming projects. The limit is really your imagination. Data types. There are many data types in Python, but the main three data types we wanna focus on in this video are numbers, strings, and Boolean. The main three data types in Python. The numbers data type is quite self-explanatory as they represent the numerical values in Python, and they are usually split up into two main categories, int and float. Integers represent numbers without decimals, while floats are numbers with decimals. There is also another data type called complex, like the ones we learned in math. In reality, you don't really use those type of numbers often, especially as beginners. So I wouldn't sweat too much about it, for now. Strings, on the other hand, are basically any values in quotes, which means it could be letters, numbers, whatever. As long as it's in quotations, it's considered a string. While Booleans represent true and false values, used mainly when you compare values with one another. Speaking of comparing values with one another, you could do this by using the various comparison operators that Python provides, which will become very important as we move on to loops and if statements. You could also use basic math operators in Python as well, like this, print four plus four, and it would just compute it for you. Variables. Think of variables as containers that would hold all these data types and values and assigns them a name that you could use later on and obviously helps organize your code. Lists, tuples, sets, and dictionaries. All of these data types allow you to store multiple things in one variable. A list uses square brackets and you can add multiple items into the list. The list could also be changeable later on in the code if you wanted to as well. Tuples are basically lists, but instead they have round brackets and they cannot be changed later in the code. Sets on the other hand uses curly brackets. They don't allow duplicate values and they cannot be changed later on in the code. Although you do have the ability to remove and add new items into the set later on. Sets are also unordered, which means items in the set could be placed randomly. Last but certainly not least, dictionaries. These guys also use curly brackets, but for each item in the dictionary, it has its own key value pair. Dictionaries could also be changeable later on in the code if you see fit. You could also access or call different items in your list by indexing them. Basically, your list has a position range, starting the count at zero to the end of your list. You can call a specific item for your list by typing the position number of the item in brackets. Or you could also get only a specific part of your list by defining the range in the brackets using colons. If and else statements allows you to make decisions and execute specific operations and code depending on if the condition was met or not and it literally reads like plain English. If this condition is true, then execute this code. Or else, if that condition wasn't true, execute this code instead. The key here is to make sure that you're indenting right so that Python can correctly read what you want to do. There is also another conditional statement known as elif that allows you to check for other conditions if the first one wasn't true before the else statement. 
Loop time, baby. There are two main types of loops, for loops and while loops. Let's start with while loops as they are the simpler versions out of the two. Basically, a while loop continues to go through the code below as long as the condition is met. Once the condition is not met anymore, it will stop the loop. A for loop allows you to iterate over data types that holds multiple items like lists and dictionaries. For example, for item and list, print item. You could also place a for loop inside of another for loop, which creates something called a nested loop, if you would like. You can do so many things with Python. It's crazy. I love it. Functions are very simple. It represents code that would only activate if the function itself is called. You can define a function by using def, and then the name of the function, parentheses, and then colons, and then indent to represent the block of code that the function would run. Inside the parentheses, you could add parameters, or I call them empty variables, which you can assign a value once you call the function. Calling a function is very simple. Just type in the name of the function with the parentheses, and if there are parameters, you can place a value for the parameter there as well. Another thing you should know is that you can put in multiple parameters for one function. Now moving on to classes, which is also the basis for object-oriented programming. And classes are known as the blueprint to create these objects. One of the main ways classes are used is to define an object or entity and give it attributes, also known as the data and features of an object. I also see classes as a way to interwork functions with each other at the same time. If a function is being used in a class, it is also known as a method or an ability of that class. Another important feature of class is the ability to use self between each function, which allows you to utilize attributes or variables from other functions in other functions. Because usually variables inside of another function would not be accessible to other functions unless it was created as a global variable. An important method you should know when dealing with classes is the init function. This function activates right away once the class is called and does not have to be called specifically to run, which should also be the main method you want to use if you want to create attributes for your class object. The last thing I want to touch on are the various modules you can import into Python. Since Python was created in the 90s, many developers throughout the years have created various modules and frameworks for Python users to use, making our lives much easier. With a simple Google search, you could find a library of useful modules you could use and add into your projects. These modules were created using the classes and functions we literally just talked about and will be the pillars of many of your projects. Hopefully this video gave you the knowledge you needed to start your Python journey. If you guys found this content useful, consider subscribing and liking the video if you guys want more knowledge dumps like this. Thanks for watching guys.